one of the very, again, beautiful occasions and making or using our time, our, our this precious time, for very good purposes. There is so many things to do in a life. There is everything is important, one after another. But deepening our spiritual or the inner value, inner calling, the nature of the, our own beings is one of the, the most important. According to Buddhism, this is the most important. Because it will last. Whatever we do in the world, everything won't stay as you want it or as it is. It always changing and shifting. When we leave this world or when we will leave this world, also everything is behind. No matter how much you are accomplished in the world we level. Whatever you did, everything will happen. And what we, when we leave, according to Buddhism, Buddha Siji, I mean, you all know this. This, we will go where we develop with our nature of the mind. Mind is always a complaining or complaining with us, but not body, not speech. Mind goes with us. Whatever we develop with the mind, that goes together. And that is the spiritual or the dharma practice, touching to the, our own best. Love, kindness, compassion, joy and appreciation, exploring that goodness as much as we can do. That much it will shine and benefit in this very lifetime when we are having difficulty troubles. But that is not ended. That will continue to grow in a life after life according to the teachings. Teaching. So today we came here using all our beautiful, many, many beautiful, important, precious activities that we have to do. You left the road on the side and came here to do practice of all the brain, deepen our connection to the Dharma. That means, Dharma means what actually? Dharma means our own goodness. Dharma is not something that object outside we're trying to overload it ourselves. When you look carefully, what is dharma? Dharma is nothing but loving kindness, compassion, joy, and relax, calm and peaceful. Calm and peace for our body, calm and peace for our mind, calm and peace for our energy, relax. And what reflect the beauty of the world then? Not just it's become the miserable quality. What you often hear in the Vajrayana teaching, or the, in the, even in the Mahayana teaching, Samsara is nirvana. There is no difference. Reality level. Why they say that? Because when you really click the nature of our own goodness of the inner mind, the nirvana or the pure land is right here. It's not something that we are lacking of that or shortage of that. Have we really did that? And where did that do? That not coming from outside. According to Buddha's teaching and according to all those great masters who actualize the realization, everyone said do in inwardly. Developing the nature of the mind to reveal that. Dispel the hindrance, the obstacles, you not allowing to see the goodness of the, our nature of the mind and the goodness of the worldly phenomena. This is obscuration, that is hindrance, the obscuration. Obscuration is also not created by someone and overloaded to us. It's one's own creation according to Greek's teaching, Buddha chapter means. It's all our creations. And what we have to do, clean. Nobody also will come to clean that and prepare that, purify that. That's what he, nobody can do. What the Greek's teacher, Buddha chapter means, said, I show you the technique. I showed you the technique. Not show, I will show. I showed you the technique. Now is your time to put that in action. If Buddha can do, and Guru Pema Sambhava can do, they did a long time ago to us. They love and kindness and compassion thought is just to us. For all the living beings, it's just like this, really in the teaching said, they always love as their own only child. The Buddha's love, Buddha's compassion, and Guru Pema Sambhava's love and compassion, all the all in life being love and compassion, and caring and concerning thought to us is the same as their own child. 
Uh, we are like they care. So they will do long term wherever they can. But they cannot do because it's one's own creatures, one's own mess that we have to clean up by ourselves. Ourself. So therefore, gracious teacher Buddha said, I show you the path. I showed you the path. Now it's your turn to put that in action. If you like to walk to clean and make better, you should do it. If you don't care too much, then don't do it. Yes. That's what it says. If you do really work hard with joy, <coughs> sorry, joy and appreciation, courage and commitment, and joy for effort, truly enlightenment is right here. It's not just shared and owned and kind of reserved by certain gurus. It's open filled. Nature is with us all the time. But today we came here to explore that qualities, that goodness. And we already did. I mean, it's not something that you'd come just today. But we're already starting that. Today we're deepening that qualities. Reactivating that qualities, goodness. Restrengthening that qualities. Bring more beauty and shine of that qualities. That is the meaning, the purpose of the retreat. That is what really reaches. So brain to do that. Brain calm and peaceful. Relax. This place is, of course, there's many beautiful retreat center, centers in the world, in this country. But Pema Samil, where we are, is one of the beautiful retreat centers in this atmosphere or this, this part of the world. Truly, it is. All the qualities, indications, whatever the retreat, if you read the books, what they say, it has all this. What is missing here? The great master, Master Maitreya, Maitreya, the future Buddha, what Asenga said in his teachings, what is the perfect college qualification of the retreat center? He said, excellent places, excellent places, excellent companions, and excellent communities, and, and, and excellent assistant and helpers. I think maybe I'm missing one of those kind of it's not coming to my mind. But excellent land, excellent place or excellent places. No. Excellent land, excellent places, excellent uh, uh, communities, excellent companions, companions, and excellent uh, facilities. I think that's it. Those are the really call it of the, 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 the hermitage. Perfect call it the hermitage. Excellent places means, someone yeah. so Excellent places means the place that is not going to. Uh, created the disturbance, particularly related with the kind of elements, such as like sicknesses, disease, and all that, that is like, so, is perfect places, perfect places. There is no kind of like, those, those disturbance will occur. Well, can easy can occur, of course it can come, those things, but cannot occur easily. So that is called excellent places. Excellent land or the area, meaning, that there is also no, not so many disturbances of the, of the such as in the daytime robbery or the nighttime robberies or the wild animals and so forth. It's also really excellent lands. And excellent convenience, there is always a facility available. If you need some help and assistance, it's always help. Help a lady and help us. And excellent companion means the same same, same people that who share the similar philosophy, similar wish, similar caring thoughts, caring thought, or okay, caring and practices. So they have similar kind of view, similar conduct, similar idea, similar thoughts. So there's no conflict in the back and forth, like clashing that. That is similar. And then excellent also communities, generally kind of peaceful communities or beautiful places. Beautiful places, and then there is nothing kind of during the daytime, there's a lot of noise and this and that things. In the nighttime, also calm and peaceful. Peaceful. So, those are the really great master. Right there, I said, the qualification of the retreat. So, this is the perfect location of the retreat. One of the best. 
of the rich locations. This is old facility, modern facility, everything really common. So when we think of those things in ancient times, hermitage is not everything as what we have now. And all that common is easily done. So now since everything, and then teachings, the practice, so you all made so many great masters, received teachings, one after another. Really, really, today you came here to reactivate it, then re glorify that some really re polishing that things. So I mean, these all teachings, which is then really put in action, which is wonderful, beautiful. This is one of the, as I said, beautiful moment in our lives that we are using very, this very precious time for beautiful, really purpose, beautiful reasons. So those are the what it is. Then generally thinking of the Buddha teaching, generally all teachings, there's a Buddha gave what it is. When he reached enlightenment at age 35, and until age 82 or 81, he gave a lot of variety of teachings. And those teachings are sometimes named as 84,000 teachings. 84,000 teachings that can be summarized in the 12 excellent teachings. Twelve excellent teachings can be summarized into three basket of teachings. Three basket or they know some in the They know some teachings. These three, <coughs> three basket of teaching is then what is the meaning of this or what is those three basket? Of course, many of you already know that. But three basket of teaching is known as Vinaya teaching, Sutra teaching and Abhidhamma teaching. So in general, all the teachings, the 84,000 teachings, all teachings of the 12 excellent teachings, or another way, kind of, called the yana level, level, nine yana teachings, all that can be summarized in these three basket teachings. Everything in the three ba basket of teachings. Why is named the three basket? Because <coughs> when I teach, it's not just a kind of one single teaching. It is a group of teaching. So this that means that the Vinaya as a basket, basket, but that whole the variety richness of the teaching, group of richness teachings. Therefore, it is named or metaphor basket of teachings, which hold so many precious jewels, gems of the instructions. Hold as like basket, like sesame, sesame box or treasure box. Treasure box. So Vinaya, then Sutra and Abhidharma, these three, three are. And what are the principal condensed meaning of the three, these three basket teachings? The essence of the Vinaya teaching is moralities, conducts, ethics, essence, essence of that teaching. And what are the essence teachings of the Sutra? That Sutra teaching essence is teachings on the concentrations, meditation, meditation and concentrations. What are the teachings on the Abhidharma essence of the Abhidharma teaching? Its teaching is known as wisdom teachings. Teachings on the wisdom. What that means, wisdom? And that's bring exactly understanding of the subject and objects. All relative truth, absolute truth. Exactly as it is. Not higher stated, no lower stated, or just the way things are. As it is. On a relative level and absolute level. And the in the both levels. Exactly as it is. That is the wisdom teachings. Wisdom teachings. And Vinaya, Vinaya teaching is also not just only conduct, conduct, conduct teaching. It combines all that three basket teaching too. Vinaya has Vinaya teachings. Vinaya has Sutra teaching or concentrated teaching. Vinaya has wisdom teachings. And the Sutra has also uh, the morality, ethic teachings. Sutra has the meditation teachings. Sutra has the wisdom teachings. Abhidharma has the same thing. It is as also conduct teachings, ethic teachings, and meditation teachings, and wisdom teachings. It is just each of those are really like, as like as I say, treasure boxes. All goodness. What it does, all those teachings, it brings gentle, peaceful, abiding, 
our speech, our mind calm and peaceful, relax. Body is relaxing. Energy or the speech is wind is relaxing. And mind is relaxing. When it is relaxing, what is happening? It is bring the deep to call it with true nature as it shines, as it is, without disturbed by the mundane consumption and the duality publications. It's exactly that it began to shine. That is what the, really the meaning of all these teachings. That's what the gracious teacher, Buddha Shakti Muni, gave all those teachings. Among those teachings, during this retreat, what we have focused of course, you all know, his teachings on the Vajrayana teaching. Vajrayana teaching is also in the Vedanta, as I said, three basket teachings. Vinaya, Abhida, uh, Sutra, Abhidharma, or in other words, it is a morality teaching and cause a meditation teaching and a Vaisnav teachings. It is. It's not just that the Vinaya teaching is all left out, all concentrated teaching left out, or is the only Vajrayana teaching or the Vaisnav teaching. No. Is all combined together. The target is to our bring our nature of the mind, bring up the nature of the our way of the body is, nature of the, our speech is to the way it is, to bring that out, exactly, not under covered by, by the fabrication and the duality. Therefore, when the Vajrayana teaching contains the, all that teaching. It has Vinaya teaching, it has uh, uh, yeah, Sutra teaching, it has Abhidharma teachings. That's the, how the beauty of the teachings. All teachings are lined up with Buddha's teaching. The day one his teaching, until his, uh, be just before Mahaparinda, right, all lined up to discover our goodness, our nature. Nature of the mind, nature of the phenomena, or nature of the subject and object exactly as it is, as it is. So this time is teachings on the Vajrayana Vajrayana teaching, of course, you all know, is considering one of the most powerful skillful means teachings Buddha ever gave. Great teacher Buddha Chakramani ever gave his soul and spirit. Why? It's targeted to the right heart of the enlightenment. Not just a partial enlightenment, Full circle enlightenment. Enlightenment of the related truth, enlightenment of, of the absolute truth. Or enlightenment of subject, enlightenment of object. Not just only one direction. This full bloom teachings of the true nature as it is or the enlightenment. Enlightenment is not again somewhere else. Enlightenment is with us, with you, with me, with you all. To reveal that qualities, that nature, is the inland Vajrayana teachings. And the Vajrayana teaching also has a many variety of teachings, as you all know, outer tantra, inner tantra teachings. But this time we are going to focus, I mean not just focus, our teaching is based upon the inner tantra teachings. Inner tantra teachings. Another tantra teaching is what they really distinction between again the outer tantra and inner tantra. Just a really simple way to simple way to tell. Outer tantra is is both are same actually to get enlightenment, but outer tantra is has more ex external activities to approach or to discover the absolute enlightenment nature or the our enlightenment nature. And the inner tantra going direct to that nature more target the book to the bull's eyes. Okay. Otherwise, both our, I mean all teachings are the same to get the true nature, as I said earlier, and you all know that. So this time is inner tantra's teachings. It's less kind of like external activity, direct to the to the enlightenment. Inner tantra teaching also has three different inner tantra in, inner tantra. Those are the Maha Yoga, Anu Yoga and Ati Yoga. That you all know. And again, they are nothing completely different from each other. What then Dokchi teaching said, Maya Yoga is the foundation, <coughs> Ana Yoga is the path, and Ati Yoga is the result. <coughs> Maya Yoga is the foundation tendra, Ana Yoga is the path tendra, and Ati Yoga is result tendra. So they are the ground or foundation, path, and 
result. <coughs> now that the gold if I used the the ground or the foundation, foundation <coughs> and the application and the achievement. Adiwa is achievement, result. So those are all connected. And this time is the essence of teaching of the of the these three anatantas. Mahayova, Anuyova, Adiyova Tantra. That we will focus. Later we need Haya Girva and Vajivarahas. Vajivara, Haya Girva and Vajivarahas. And Haya Girva and Vajivarahas among the five Dhyana Buddha is a Pimba Pemis. Five Dhyana Buddha had, what five Dhyana Buddhas? And Vajra, Buddha family, Vajra family, Renna family, Pema family, Karma families. That I think basically you all know that. We all, and we all know, know that. Haya Girva is the principal family of the Pema family, of Pema family. It's the Pema family teachings. It's the, so that means Haya, Haya Girva and Vajavara is the Pema family, is the Amitabha's families, all of those families. Family. And Guru Pema Samba family, same. Our Lokini Chaurachiri is a family, Tara families. And so it's the same. They're all in the Pema family group. Even though they are, again, these five families are not completely different from each other, it only highlight of the principle of the quality of nature of the, of the way things are. Nature of the way things are. Ultimate level, these five families are what? Those are five wisdoms. Five wisdoms. Dharma Dhatu wisdoms, and marital -like wisdoms, and equanimity wisdoms, and discrimination or distinctly awareness, distinctly understanding awareness wisdoms and all accomplishing wisdoms. These are the five wisdoms. That is the nature of our mind. That is the nature of call, our qualities. Your nature of mind and our nature of mind. Nature of mind. But these Buddhas are representative of those different aspects of nature of the qualities. Qualities. So Pema family is represented more distinctively, distinctively understanding everything that way things are that awareness wisdoms. Or sometimes it also like discrimination awareness wisdoms. And the thought can be this discrimination awareness may not be thinking more and a little bit more kind of talking that discrim it's not something you discriminating this I want that or don't want that. It's not discriminating. Just see things are exactly like this. I mean, you know English better. It's not discrimination, so they may kind of make a judgment. Judgment. So that is the Pema family. Pema family is one of the leading families. That means Pema family is one of the most powerful families that connect to the practitioner and bring enlightenment within these lifetimes. That is according to Vajrayana Buddhism, it is true. And for example, it's very Vajrayana Buddhism. Everyone talks about our location, talks about the Amitabhas, talks about Guru Pema Sambhavas. That's how popular, how powerful, how benefit, it penetrates to the heart of the enlightenment and brain the realization. That means removing obstacles, diseases, sickness, handedness, and then obscurations and revealing that nature. So today or this week, we are going to connect and concentrate to this practice. We are really trying to make this more meaningful, more simple, and bring more joy and appreciation. And we are talking with the Bodhicitta, according to the Buddha's teaching, all those great masters, the lineage of practical masters said, everything is based on Bodhicitta. We are doing this retreat, not just for, only for ourselves, but to bring joy and peace, happiness. But really, with this, what we are doing together, may this bring joy and peace, happiness to the world and they can bring shine the wisdom or discrimination or the distinctly understanding knowledge of wisdom shine so everybody respect to each other, everybody knows the value and the important and the preciousness of the everyone's life is. Respect and appreciate so therefore calm, peace and no more violence. Really wish that. And that is our practice. Generally practice I mean, is all best on both each other. One way to talk, wishing both each other, actualizing both each other. Not just only during our sudden practice, wishing both each other for three times to pray for both each other. That is just a reminding. Our practice is we have to do always. 
really, and then during this retreat, also really wish that may I bit what I do, may I benefit for that all living beings. That means also include ourselves, our families, not just all living beings coming only for the for someone and not include us. But that teaching is what called in the teaching. So win-win situation. Benefit to yourself, benefit to all the things. With love, kindness, compassion, respect and appreciation and a peaceful atmosphere. And that is what, what the Buddha teaching is. Really. So therefore bring up those old beautiful thoughts and intention, motivation, and make that this retreat a sizzling retreat. Energetic retreat is really that's wonderful. And dedicated that merits. Those old Buddhas give the great master, great grandmaster, they give told us through all those tools, tools, bodhicitta and meditation and dedication and aspirations. All those. So that is my, my brief talk today and thank you again for coming thank you. again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Again, thank you. Thank you. Again, second. And meditation. And then, and then tomorrow also we do the empowerment. Empowerment of the higher giver and Vajavarahi uh, empowerment. And so then we go over the sadhana's teachings and all that. So that's the day. In this afternoon we're doing with five people, right? Yes. I think it's really good. But of course you all know that this uh,